What is up guys, Digital VFX here once again. And today I have a pretty useful video that is going to show you how to kind of clean up some RAM on your computer and make your sessions a lot more smoother. And by doing this, um, it will pretty much just make your sessions not lag as much, um, especially when getting into the bigger sessions and have a lot of layers and a lot of things going on. But um, one of the biggest things that I've noticed is uh, computers have trouble uh, when you have a lot of automation clips um, and that's because um, if you have an automation clip like this automating a parameter I have this automating this snare so let me just uh, solo the snare and the automation clip when you go into the snare properties you'll see this is the parameter that I uh, automated right there is the pitch and so if you have a bunch of automation clips going at the same time the computer has to kind of uh, automate all of these in real time as well as play all the audio and it's just um, you know it's really intensive on the CPU so a good way to uh, to fix this is to open an Edison channel and it doesn't really matter what channel you are in your mixer I normally just throw an Edison on the master and just work off of that but I'm just gonna go in here and say new and get a clean slate and so now what you want to do is set this to either on input or on play it doesn't really matter too much but the important thing is is we got uh, make sure these two are soloed and then all you want to do is go into Edison and press play make sure you record arm it whoops press play up here actually let me fix something real quick just do new I just want to turn the reverb off of this snare so let me just undo that alright so now we can get back to it record arm and play all right so that sounds pretty good so now what we can do is we can delete this automation clip as well as this snare and go back into your Edison and you just click the second button from the end here and this is drag or copy your sample that you have in here so I'm just gonna drag that into here turn on that track and then you know if you make sure stretch is not selected up here in the uh, in the audio section then you can zoom in and you can kind of just fit that to exactly where you want to uh, to go and so now if we play this and it has the pitch riser and everything in there and so this definitely helps because if we go back to that snare right here you'll see that it no longer has to automate this in real time so that definitely saves a lot of CPU and so honestly if you wanted to you could probably delete this MIDI clip too so now you have a free channel and you can either put something in there instead of uh, kind of duplicating patterns and so it definitely kind of helps clean up your sessions and I believe this uh, technique is called printing audio files and I'm sure there's multiple names but I always call it printing um, and that's just when you pretty much bounce the audio um, the MIDI files to an audio track and it definitely helps out so what I can do now is just grab this sample and assign it to the snare where we had it before I believe it was this one so now we can link it to that track and then re-add the reverb and so there you have it so now if you put everything else in context you no longer have automation clips and you can do this the exact same thing for uh, actually let me do this one more time to show you what else it can work on I have this uh, just this um, kind of repetitive synth thing and it's the same synth that I used in the drop so I'm having it fade in in the buildup and so what I can do is the exact same process where I go to my master my Edison and I can not that go here 
new and it cleans it and as you can see I um, I already printed this because this was just MIDI but now what I can do is go back to that master click on Edison same thing either on input or on play I'll choose input this time to show it still works um, I guess I should explain the difference uh, on play is just whenever you press play and on input is just whenever signal goes in there so if I have uh, if I start my recording here and I were to press play it would not record until signal was actually being fed into Edison so on input let me just try that I completely forgot this channel was on <laughs> that was my fault Actually, I make sure that's muted. All right, so now it's just those two tracks. All right, now we can go and record. So put that there and go back to Edison, new on input. Now press play. And as I just explained, it starts recording uh, when input is put into Edison. Alright, so there we have it. And now what we can do is simply go back to the Edison channel still recording but here's the extra part we don't want we can just highlight that delete it and then the same process drag the sample in there so now we have the sample that is our length um, there's actually a little bit out front that I didn't want that it recorded so I can make sure stretches off again and I could take that off Actually, let me just make that the same length. Too zoomed in. There we go. All right, so again, now we can undo that cutoff. And honestly, we could go back to our synths or wherever we had that. Um, where did I have this build up? Right here. So we have this fruity filter and we can even go in and replace none. And so you can take out effects that you are only using for one or two samples. And so that'll definitely free up some space. So now we can even get rid of this and we have this sample and so now let's hear it in context And that's pretty much it. That's all I really want to cover in this video, and I'm going to leave it with uh, just playing this song. But I hope this helped. Remember to comment, rate, subscribe, throw any questions you have down in the comments below. But as always, this has been a digital VFX production. Yeah, yeah, yeah.